just to get into the presentation, to give you a little bit of background behind DevAssist, why I set up the business. As I say, my background uh, is in development, so I'm a very unpopular uh, character because it was always my job to go out there and identify development opportunities, knock on doors, make the deals happen, take them through the planning system, and whenever I took it through the planning system, that was where the wheels came off, and that's where I started to upset local communities. So I've spent the last 30 years dealing with very hostile people that look like this, um, that shout at me, they swear at me, uh, they, I've had physical violence, I've been spat at. Um, I am incredibly unpopular. I think syphilis is more popular than I am. Uh, the National Planning Policy Framework, uh, it was touched on earlier, it is a cultural shift. For me as a developer, this has been a real, real game changer. It is, as we heard earlier, a presumption in favour of sustainable development which should be seen as a golden thread running through both plan making and decision taking. To me as a developer, the reason that's become so relevant is because if you go back a few years, and if I'm going to quote an exact example, I went to see a council, made the appointment with a planning officer to pre-consult over a development I was looking to do. She started the meeting with, I don't know why we're having this meeting, over my dead body, are you ever going to get planning on this site? So they start from a very negative position. They're now being told to start from a very positive position, a presumption in favour. It's a massive shift in the way that local authorities think about it. Cul-de-sacs, um, we touched on it a second ago on how they can be extended. Now this is very relevant, I'm going to give you two uh, cases here on how to view cul-de-sacs and it's to do with ransom strips which you, you may or may not have come across, uh, I'm sure you've heard of them um, but I'm just going to go a bit more into the valuation of these. What we have here is an ex-council estate under Margaret Thatcher's right to buy, most of them privately owned. The story of this cul-de-sac centres on this property at the end. Previous owner of this property approached the housing association and said, I'd like a bigger garden. Can I buy this strip of land which you own right in front of my house? They said gladly. It's a maintenance liability to us. Sold it to him for £2,000. His motive was very innocent. He just wanted a bigger garden. They didn't put any covenants on it. Um, he enjoyed it for a couple of years. Then invites local estate agents around, says, oh, I'm ready to move. What's it worth? They said 250 He puts it on the market for 250 In comes Peter the fireman. Peter the fireman buys that for 250 with 150 grand's worth of debt. Six months later, he gets a knock on the door from me. I'm already talking to Terry here about this development. And what I want to build is six luxury detached houses worth about one and a half million each. But for me to get that past the parish council and get their support and get the local council support, I need some form of planning gain, which comes in the form of social housing. So although I'm looking to build effectively seven private, I'm offering seven social. So it comes out as a 50-50, admittedly huge difference proportionally in square footage, but nevertheless, it's seven social for seven private. Now the parish is supportive of my proposal and I want that strip of land. Why do I want that bit of strip of land? Well, it's all to do with snobbery. If I create an access for the rich and an access for the poor, these went up in value. Now, there's an awful admission, terrible admission, but by going back to the valuer, which I did, he upped the valuer 100,000 apiece on these because it wasn't sharing an access with social housing. As I, I'm not saying that's wrong or right, I'm just saying I'm a businessman who wants that £600,000 in my appraisal. Um, so, now I need that strip of land. The deal I did with Peter was he gets this brand new house built for him. It's three storeys, it's carpeted, it's luxury, beautiful kitchens. I was partnering this with Banner Homes and they build a beautiful product. It's, it's a lovely product. Um, he would have ended up in, or did end up, £600,000 house, mortgage free. Was living in a 250, two bedroom ex council house with 150 debt. Over half a million pounds better off tax free. And the twist in the tail in, guess which housing association is competitively bidding for those houses? The same one that sold the strip of land for £2,000. They had a ransom. Gross mismanagement of their assets. Well, thank you very much for listening and uh, have a safe journey home. Thank you.